Hey. Hey there. Wonder what do, what 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 should we do today? I don't know. Well, I was thinking. I've got hair. I got hair too. Well, I'm pretty sure the camera guy still has some hair left. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got an idea. Maybe we should make herbal shampoo. So we're outside in my medicine wheel garden for the very first step that you need to do in order to make herbal shampoo, which would be? Soapwort flower. Exactly. So if you don't have fresh soapwort or access to it, you can definitely use dried. But as you can take, uh, take a look and see, unbeknownst to me, when I planted my soapwort, it's kind of invasive. It's kind of invasive, <laughs> exactly. And it's actually even choked out my yarrow. So one of my goals this year was to make a lot of tincture with soapboard, but to also find other creative ways to use this amazing plant, Saponaria officinalis. One of the things I stumbled across was a blog post by Herbal Academy on how to make your own natural herbal shampoos. And I thought, this is fantastic. So you will, of course, need soapboard. And the reason for this, and it earns both its Latin name and common name, because it's really high in a chemical constituent called saponins. And saponins foam up. Not so much like um, commercial shampoos that you would be used to, but this is going to be the base of our shampoo. So for every one cup of shampoo you want to make, you're going to need three tablespoons of Saponaria officinalis. Now the entire plant contains saponins, so if you don't have a lot of it, no problem. You can do leaves, flowers, even the root and stem. We're probably just going to stick to flowers for today. We're also going to be adding in some other herbs, right? Yep. Do you remember which ones I told you? No. <laughs> we're going to we're going to pick some chamomile flowers. Oh yeah. We're going to pick some lavender flowers, and we're going to pick a little bit of peppermint as well. So That's if you've got, awesome. yeah, if you've got lighter color hair like my son and I do, you're definitely going to want to add things like chamomile or calendula. If you have red hair, you can add things like hibiscus and rose hips. Darker colored hair, you can add things like rosemary. So there's lots and lots of options. Stinging nettle also makes a really great addition to shampoos. And of course, things like lavender and rose petals are really nice. So we're going to get to harvesting and then you'll see us again in the herbal kitchen where we'll show you exactly how to make this. So we are back inside from our harvesting adventures. Why don't you tell everybody what we harvested? We harvested soapwort, chamomile, lavender, and peppermint. Exactly. So the only herb necessary for this recipe is the soapwort. And the recipe on Herbal Academy's blog was for one cup of water and three tablespoons of soapwort. But because my handy dandy little shampoo bottle here holds two cups, how many tablespoons of soap wort do we need now? Six. Six. So the rest of the herbs we kind of just gathered until we felt that we had the right amount. And all you need to do now is take your herbs, put them in a pot. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can help with that. Yes, you can. 
And then we're going to pour our water over there. I it. can do that. Yep. Yeah. Safely. Safely. <laughs> nice. So then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this to a boil and once it comes to a boil we're going to put a lid on it and drop it down to a simmer for about 15 minutes oh wait um you definitely shouldn't you should have adult supervision with the stove you should definitely have adult supervision yes so i had my herbs simmering on the stove for about 15 minutes with the lid on and it's nice and cool now we're a little bit cooler than room temperature so it's time to strain out your shampoo and I don't normally use a lot of cheesecloth because you do have to throw it out afterwards, but I really wanna make sure that I can wring out these herbs very, very well. So what I will do is that I've just laid my cheesecloth over top of a strainer. It just kinda of helps to keep it contained so it doesn't all fall in when you pour. I'm just gonna carefully pour out the herbs. And you wanna get them all in there, you know, strain out all that goodness. And you can use a potato ricer too, if that is something that you have at home, or you can do exactly what I did and use some cheesecloth and check it out. Like it's already, you can see, I don't know if you can get that on camera, but you can already see how there's bubbles and that it's foaming up. So I'm just gonna squeeze out, look how much more I got, right? So you don't wanna waste anything. Squeeze, squeeze everything out. All right. And then the next step is to simply pour it into your bottle of choice. And I've got one of these neat little um, kind of shampoo squeeze bottle things. I'm gonna give this a try first. I also have some pump bottles that are designed for foaming soap. So if it doesn't suds up the way that I would like, I may try and put some in one of those as well. So that's a tip that you can give a try as well. Do not expect this to perform the same way as a commercial shampoo. They've got a lot of ingredients in them that are designed uh, things like uh, sodium lauryl sulfate and other foaming agents that are designed to make them suds up but check it out like it really is foaming quite a bit and that's from the soap board folks there we are. so this video is actually going to be filmed over two days because tomorrow morning after i work out and wash my hair I'm going to report back on how I liked this. So for today, that's it. That is my yield. So obviously I lost a little bit of water because of evaporation, but this was the 500 milliliters of water and our six tablespoons of soap wort plus a dash of peppermint, chamomile, and lavender. And I will be back tomorrow with freshly washed hair. Good morning, everybody. As promised, I am here with freshly washed hair. Uh, quickly, I just want to apologize for some of the sound problems in the previous clips. When we reviewed them, we didn't realize I have a new mic. I'm trying to go all fancy and we were having some feedback issues with it. So hopefully we will have them resolved for future videos. I just want you guys to be able to hear, hear me better, which is why I purchased this brand new mic that likes to make crackling noises. So hopefully we can get these tech issues solved. But back to my hair. So this morning after I worked out, I washed my hair with the soap board shampoo. So the first thing I noticed was that it felt like I was washing my hair with water. So that's something to kind of be aware of. It's not gonna perform and act like a commercial shampoo. The second thing I noticed is that it didn't really suds up in my hair. So I did use quite a bit of it and washed my scalp and did all that stuff that I normally do. And then I follow up with a herbal hair vinegar that I make, which is um, the conditioner that I use. So I would have to say, I think my hair is pretty clean. It's not as clean as it would be with a commercial shampoo, but commercial shampoos have a tendency to strip all of your natural oils out. And when we do this, it just sends a signal to the sebaceous glands to produce more oil. So while for a temporary period of time, you have this non-greasy hair look, what ends up happening is your body just produces extra oil to compensate for the stuff that you've stripped out. So while my hair may not look quite the same as it does with a commercial shampoo, um, I definitely feel confident that it's clean. So I'm quite happy with this, knowing that I can grow ingredients on my property that allow me to make a natural shampoo. I probably won't use it exclusively. I'll probably alternate between a few different shampoos. I like to do this anyway. I've got shampoo bars, 
I have some, some commercial ones that I do like that are, have really clean ingredients. Green Beaver is my favorite, and I am enjoying this one. So for me, this is definitely a thumbs up and a success. I'm going to try putting it in a foaming hand soap container too to see if that kind of gives me that feeling of sudsiness that we're used to. Um, but other than the texture part of it, I think it was a resounding success. So I hope this encourages you to start looking at making some of your own natural care products. Again, this recipe was from Herbal Academy and it will be posted below. I thank you so much for watching and spending some of your time with me. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.